welcome seekers of truth and wisdom to Soul Wisdom Transitions, where we embrace the magical dance between the mind, body, and spirit. This sacred space is dedicated to guiding you on a soulful journey of self-discovery, personal growth, and spiritual awakening. Get ready to harness the power within as we embark on a transformational odyssey towards a more enlightened and fulfilling existence. Open your hearts and minds for the wisdom of the soul awaits and let's the transition begin. Welcome back to another episode of Soul Wisdom Transitions where we explore the various stages of personal transformation and spiritual growth. I am your host, Terry, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Welcome, please welcome Dina Tibbs. Dina is a spiritual teacher, companion, soul coach, and wisdom advisor, and author of The Maven, the Maven's Nest. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Dina. Thank you, Terry, for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's dive right in. So in your blog, The Maven's Nest, you share that you have you live to learn and that you learn as a way of being of service through sharing your wisdoms and your gifts. You live to be a connoisseur of wisdom teachings and connections, and you seek to understand even when you don't agree. Can you share a little bit how you came to that awareness and just started on that path? <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, sure. 52 <laughs> years in the making. Let's do this in like 10 minutes. But, um, you know, I've traveled a lot of roads. Um, I've traveled deep down in the underworld and come back again and again and again. Um, I've studied spiritual paths of, of all, all of them, pretty much, you know, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in all of them, but I, I get to, I might be what you would call like an omnist, somebody who believes and seeks the truth in all paths and also seeks and looks at the untruths and finds those, or at least our thought patterns around how certain, um, certain traditions have been uh, distorted, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so, you know, but at the core of it, um, every sort of transition in my life that I've gone through, it really requires tapping into your soul. And also, you know, I work with my ancestors and, you know, that sort of thing, um, to really say what's next and be willing to let go of what you thought and how you thought things should and could be. I'm going through it once again right now and have embarked on a, a part-time position that's a completely new, I mean, totally new thing to me because I do love to learn and I will admit I get bored sometimes. So it's like, what can I go learn that's brand new and then still support, you know, and, and the people that I, I support on the spiritual teaching and wisdom side of things, but I have to be out like I can't just be working remotely. I have to be out in the public. That's what helps give me fodder for for the writings. And the Maven's Nest is a fairly new uh, substack. I've been writing on my blog for years and years and years. Um, so some of that stuff's going to start to move over and be reignited. And then there's going to be some new things. But what I've come into awareness, especially as I've just set my son on his career path um, and there were changes there very last minute because I supported him deeply in knowing what his soul wanted to do and not just go along with the external line of things and for a while he was going down a path of I'm going to do this because it makes money and blah 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 and I said okay and there were a couple of times where I was like I know this isn't for him but I can only say it once or twice and then he's going to figure it out. And the same thing with my clients, I can only plant the seed. You know, I'm not a coach that is prescriptive. I don't tell people what to do, um, even when I can see it, because I'm highly intuitive. So it's just like, okay, people have to arrive at their own information um, and then give them tools and ways in which to do that when they're not in my presence. But he ended up two weeks before we were going to move him into college, make a change. And what he's going to be doing is, is I know way more aligned with his, his soul design. Yeah. And, and, and that's what we, we do as coaches. Um, we, we support our clients and, uh, I am also as, you know, intuitive as you are. So I get downloads in the middle of a session <laughs> and 
what uh, I don't I don't tell my clients. I say, here's something that you might want to think about, and just share. And um, you know, it just gives them the opportunity to to think about a different perspective, and um, giving them the opportunity to you know just touch into like you like you did with your son. Where, you know, we get these messages, especially at his age, you know, you're supposed to, I should, you know, this is what's expected. This is what everyone else is doing. Knowing full well that it's not, it's not going to light you up in the morning. You know, what right. is it that's going to, you know, light you up and feed your soul? And if you get quiet enough and listen, um you you absolutely know from your soul wisdom what it is that you should be doing and what i like to say one of my favorite quotes is uh it's from the movie um apollo 13 failure is not an option except i add on to it failure is not an option it's a necessity <laughs> you don't yeah. learn and you don't grow if you don't fail and if you fail, instead of, you know, berating yourself uh, and just saying, oh, my God, this is terrible. I was so stupid. You know, whatever message, whatever your story you're telling yourself. Give yourself some credit, because if you failed, how fabulous was it that you actually had the courage to try? Right. Exactly. And you learned something. And, and my take a little different. Work. You know, I don't believe in failure at really at heart, like at all yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it, a to that degree it's a of, um, you know, it's, it's, um, and that's where the Maven's Nest comes in and, and, and my website, you know, I, I work with those who um, have d tried to go down this whole, I have to have one purpose, one vocation path. And it's like, that is not in everyone's soul design. It's not mine. And so uh, it it's really, mine. I've been, you know, I've, I've taken different paths throughout, yeah. you know, to get where I am now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would say, yeah. I'm like, and exactly. I, it's very cir circuitous. Yeah. And I love my life because of that. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I failed at doing this because no. I didn't turn it into a six figure or seven figure business or right, whatever. Right. It was like, this is where I wanted to be at the time. This is what I wanted to be learning. And now I can share that wisdom. I always say, <clears throat> I think I learned a lot of the things that I learned uh, in the health and wellness and body work, like hands-on mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. world, f so that I could connect people to the best of the best in those industries. Right, because, right, right, right. Yeah, it, and right? it was a, a, a part time, a short time in, in my journey path where I was a uh, energy worker and um, massage mm -hmm. therapist. Yep. And I would tell my clients, I said, look, if if you don't like you know, if, if what I'm doing doesn't resonate with you, don't not continue to seek out this modality. Let me recommend someone else. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know, you don't, you don't connect with everyone, but, and that's okay. But, you know, don't, don't not let's figure out, you know, who, who will work best with you. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. And nothing's forever. That's where I, right. you know, everything is impermanent. The Buddhists teach it, like everything is impermanent. And that's why right. I don't believe in failure because it's like nothing's right. permanent anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's not a failure. It's a learning opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. I learned what didn't work. It's still a learning opportunity. Yep. Yeah. Or I didn't, I learned what didn't work for me. Exactly. And that's fine too. So, um, have you ever found yourself in a difficult or challenging situation and heard the soft whisper of your soul wisdom trying to give you your message? And did you choose to ignore it and shut it down or and choose a different route because that's what was expected of you? Or did you listen to that little voice and uh, have an interesting and fabulous experience? <laughs> oh, gosh, there's so many of those examples. Like, I, I, I think I put in the in what I wrote back to you on that one. It's like, I can't recall a time not listening. Well, it, it, actually, the story was I didn't listen at first and then I did later. So um, when I moved from New Jersey to Colorado, 
um, I was with a, 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 you know, I was 24 at the time. I was engaged and I knew that that person wasn't the right one for me. Um, and I should not have let him move, you know, but my confidence, so on. And then I got here and um, in the corporate job I was in, you know, my confidence built. I, you know, was well liked. I was successful, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was like, it's time. It's, it's, it's time. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. And it's okay. And now it's time to break this off and he can do, go back, do whatever. Uh, didn't matter. Um, and I was also getting guidance that there was someone waiting for me. Um, and I wasn't really thinking I was going to have this rebound relationship, but um, 25 years later, I'm married to the rebound guy. So that's a fun and light, you know, example of that where it can shift in one situation really where maybe you didn't listen but instead of going into that hole and beating yourself up it's like okay i'm ready to listen now exactly and it it comes with it comes with wisdom it comes with knowledge and it comes with taking the time to reconnect and and listen to your soul wisdom so that mm -hmm. you can recognize it when it happens because there have been times on my journey when I did not pay attention and, um, you know, literally whacked upside the head when you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. we've had those experiences. Well, and I tend to think there, and it's other, that cosmic two by four has happened um, when I was actually in really deep spiritual spaces. Um, and then there comes a time, I believe when you're in those, when you, you kind of go through those, um, transitions and deep paths and deep studies um, that sometimes um, you get hit with the cosmic two by four to to bring you back to your humility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is also, you know, happened to me over the years. And it's like, okay, it can't all be, it's not all love and light. This universe operates in paradox. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a universal law. So it, it's not to say, oh, you know, I mean, I do make practices to go in deep and go into the shadow places and, and so on, but you have to come back up to the light as well. And then the the reverse of that is true. If you're all up here connecting with the angels and everything else up in the upper worlds, it's it you're sometimes people start to bypass and ignore what's real. Mm -hmm. And that's often when you get hit with the cosmic two by four. Um, Yes, very much so. And um, one of the things that you mentioned in the uh, in your your answer for the questionnaire is you said you have the, the gift of clear cognizance and just knowing, and it includes positive and negative things that are about to about to occur. Um, I I have I have heard of um, clear audience. You know, I, I've heard of many of the Claire's, but the, can you explain a little more about what Claire cognizance is? How, uh, is that, well, how does that, what does that look like for you, I guess? Well, it's interesting you brought up the other one. So, I mean, just, just, just like everything, we have everything within us. Um, we're the acorn, you know, that has the full oak tree. <laughs> Um, so we all have the into ever to me, there is no somebody who's much more intuitive or psychic than anybody else. They just happen to honor and own and hone their gifts. Um, so we all have some bits and pieces. It's like no one's extremely left or right brained. Right. So for me, it, you can't explain care, clear cognizance. That's actually the nature of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because you just know. Okay. It's there, it's in your head, and the problem, the, the skill to hone is to discern, you know, what's true and what isn't, and that's, or what's true for you in the moment, and that's very difficult. Now, for me in particular, it'll just be there, and then I will, my back, my secondary, if you will, is, is clear audience, so then I'll start to hear. Uh, if it's true, if it's real, if it's something I need to move forward with and not just let go because it's, you know, you talked about getting downloads for clients. Part of it, how it comes through for me, um, and it's in my human design also, is as ideas, 
you know, and so I have to say, oh, no, like, because we can't, you know, I'm not meant to do all of it, right? So sometimes it's like, oh, that's not mine. Maybe it's this person's, maybe it's just, you know, um, and uh, so that's how it shows up for me. And I also recently learned of a one, uh, a, an oracular skill that I had never heard of from ancient Greece. And I'm like, they, we joke that I'm the sacred librarian, that I was like a librarian and many, many, many past lives ago. And I don't know why I didn't do it in this one, but that's another story for another day. But um, <laughs> because I actually prax, I, I process as I speak. So my husband jokes that I have no filter. So it, it'll often come in and then it'll, I'll hear, and then it's, I've actually, sometimes I don't know what's coming out of my mouth, which is why I have no filter. And then the, the synchronicities start to hit in the language. And the same thing with listening to, to others. Um, I may ask the divine for some wisdom and then it shows up in somebody else's language. And I came across, um, uh, like I said, it was from the oracles of Delphi in ancient Greece, something called the uh, Cletonism, Cleton meaning the words of God or, or to, to get synchronicity from language. So I'm exploring that one a little bit because that's really, you know, when you, the thing about soul was, or soul curriculum or knowing what your soul path or purpose is, which is not vocation and career, um, is we, you know, we go back in time and we look at really our lives and say, okay, this has been present with me since childhood. And, and it may have come through in the, like, I was nicknamed by the family motor mouth and thank goodness I dropped in with a family that didn't believe in the children should be seen and not heard um, story. So they let me talk, 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 talk. But now I know, like we joke, I, you know, I came out of the womb talking. So that's why when you asked if I was nervous about this podcast, I'm like, no, no, trust me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, and that's why I have to go out into the world too and do work because I need to be in conversation. That's how I receive Interesting. wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 interesting, and and um, I I don't receive the wisdom that way as much. But um, like you, I um, I do animal communication, and everyone can. Mm -hmm. They just don't know that they can. Right. And um, actually, uh, since since my traumatic brain injury and recovering from that. I am much more in tune with that than I used to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that is so powerful when I am in the, um, in the round pen partnering with my horses and helping a client. Yeah. Because I get, not only do I, I accept the download from spirit and my soul wisdom, but I also get the ancient uh, wisdom of the horses <laughs> i've and... got three of them sitting back outside my window right now and it's interesting i did canine massage for a while okay. and that was that was a skill for me that i didn't have in the sense that okay there's no language here yeah. dina so you've got to quiet down um and listen to these animals and what they're telling you just strictly through touch and energy you know their energy mm -hmm. yeah, so exactly. um it taught me a lot because that was a time of a very difficult time of my life, actually. Um, and I didn't want to be out doing healing work with humans. And of course, as you know, those animals ended up healing me primarily. And most of my work at the time would be, you know, what I would call hospice care because most folks would call upon me when their dogs were getting towards their end stages to keep them comfortable. So um, it was a deeply humbling experience to work oh, with yeah. all those yeah. animals. Yeah. And, and, um, and I, I like to tell um, some of my animal communication clients, the, um, the human aspect of that connection that um the animals are they they approach life and transition so much differently than we do mm -hmm. it's not a big deal it's going from one type of energy to an to another it's right. not an ending it's you know they may choose mm -hmm. to come back as someone else uh, or something else, or, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's, it's, uh, we, 
we have such a, you know, a much more difficult time processing than they do. Right. I always joke, we overcomplicate everything. I mean, even, even right down to the purpose stuff, it's like the tree out there does not question what its purpose is. My horses do not question and, and ruminate over what their purpose, well, horses right. might a little, no, I'm right. kidding. <laughs> and the dog, I mean, the natural world knows right. where they are in the web of life. Right. Exactly. And, and, and that's, it's all, that's fine. That's wonderful. And, and, you know, sometimes what we have to realize is that, you know, you may, you may have to, you know, put up with or deal with a, um, a nine to five grind. And if you look at it as a means to an end, so is that nine to five grind giving you the financial ability to explore mm -hmm. and take other classes and do other certifications, right. then you know, is it, is it tedious? Yeah. You know, I was in the corporate world for more than 25 years. And because of that, I, you know, I have a pension, I have a nice financial retirement sure. account. I was able to do, uh, you know, massage therapy certification. I was, um, I did mm -hmm. uh, Canfield certification. I have the equine gestalt coaching. So because of that, I was able to explore right. what my true purpose was and take the time that I needed, um, especially during the the uh, pandemic shutdown, to finish writing and publish my book. And, you know, as a high introvert, I thought the pandemic was fabulous. <laughs> I, had, I had been training for it all my life. I you used know, to think like, I was I, an extrovert until that happened. And I'm like, you know, I've like, changed over the years. I'm fine mm -hmm. with not going out. I'm fine with not networking. I'm fine. <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. And now, you know, now, now that everything is opened up again, I kind of got too fine with it. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. just, you know, you just go out and explore and, um, you know, it's, 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 that's, that's the journey. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, you know, having a goal is not the be all and end all. It's the journey of getting to the the, the goal or not. Right. And right. you know, there, you know, as you said, you know, failure. It's not a failure. It's a journey. Let's figure it out. And what did you learn from it? Right. You and know? I think to your point with the corporate, I do I do a process called Sparkotypes, and that is really where we're looking. And it was founded by Jonathan Field, so it is meant for work mm -hmm. um and by work he defines it as as um you know anything that we put our effort into um but what i discovered when i started creating some programs around uh say what i call sacred assignment is it's 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 an energy and once you understand yes. what that is like for me it is to um inspire and mentor and so when i again when i reverse engineered that I realized, well, that's exactly what I was doing in the corporate world. And, and I loved my corporate. I actually loved my corporate job until things did start to shift and, and politics and other things happened. Mm -hmm. But knowing what I'm actually here to do means I can go back and do it there and be actually in my joy. Mm -hmm. I can go do it, you know, as a volunteer and be in my joy. It's when I can't do you know, if for whatever reason may be held back or in my own shadows to where I have to say, that's how I tap in. And I say, are you being inspired or inspiring right now? And if not, what's going on? Very um, and that's my compass. That's my touch point. That's yeah. my intuition your, saying. Your, your awareness to, to reconnect with your soul wisdom mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know, what's going on here? Right. I yeah. mean, like I said, and, the... and that's, that's fabulous. And that's, that's what, you know, the whole show is about is to, to reconnect and, and be, be more aware of the messages that you're getting from your, your soul, your soul guidance. So um, one of the questions I asked is, uh, can you let us know about your personal journey of spiritual growth and awakening? And your first response was, oof, there's a book in the works on this subject. <laughs> so are you, are you writing a book? 
Um, I'm always writing a book and then I keep changing the subject. So, you know, I've got the spiritual memoir thing happening. And because what I mentioned to you about being in conversation, I'm also in the midst of, um, actually, I get it. I, ha, uh, you know, I've had a lot going on personally in the last year. And so I'm going to reignite, uh, and, and it, the other book is, um, going to be an interview series really around sharing intergenerational wisdom. Um, so that one's kicking off too, but, um, it, yeah, the path of spiritual awakening. Like when people ask me that question, I, I, I'm like, I, I've walked this path it's since childhood, even though I had very little spiritual training. And that's a whole story in and of itself. You know, parents were hippies. They did not want to baptize me into the Catholic church. However, I've re-embraced and my grandmother who taught me a lot of folk remedy because she was Italian. So it's a whole different ball game, European um Catholicism versus American oh, yeah. Christianity. It's an entirely different oh, yeah. ballgame. And so, you know, I'm reconnecting with some teachers who have a lot of uh, wisdom from Italy because they have teachers there so that I can bring about that ancestral wisdom again. Mm. But um, like to say I had this lightning bolt strike spiritual awakening. No, that's not how it's been for me at all. Um, I've had, in fact, any event, like I said before, I've, I'd be on the path of studying something super deep and then boom, get hit with the cosmic two by four that would put me down in the underworld. And it was learning to um, go through instead of try to bypass it that, uh, you know, that taught me the most in, 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 and taught me to intentionally spend time in that underworld shadowy place so that you don't get hit with the cosmic two by four. I mean, it still happens. And, you know, again, everything is impermanent and everything. I mean, if there's one teaching I have for people, it's like everything, everything, everything is in the mystery. I mean, even I was having a major anticipatory grief situation with my son, thinking my son was going to move out, but uh, yet, of course, I was going to let him gr go. And then he decided not to go and pursue something else. So he's with me for a while longer until he's through the program he's taking. But um, so that's, I mean, that happened two weeks. I mean, f I was finally actually coming to terms with it two weeks before. So, you know, th the pandemic, again, the mystery, it should have taught us to embrace the fact that things can change in an instant in an instant for good or for bad, negative, positive, what's going on in the world in you know, in the Middle East. I mean, I have lots of friends in that part of the world. So it's like, we don't know. And so, you know, and it is cliche to say, but it's like, you know, stop messing around, stop saying you're not good enough or you don't know enough or, you know, any of the other things, the, the little inner mean girls that are holding you back because it's like, we don't know. We really don't know. I went through breast cancer. I have many friends, you know, many of us have, um, which is, you know, the, the numbers of people I know is staggering and, and upsetting and unfortunate, right? So that was a wake up call too that said, okay, you know, you don't have time to, to mess around. And, and, you know, but I also think, again, going back to the humility piece is we don't all have to run around being spiritual teachers and life coaches in order to make our impact either. Um, Carolyn Mace, who you may have, you know of, she always says, you know, one of our biggest struggles as humans is that we're always trying to be so extraordinary instead of embracing right. the ordinary and the mundane. And so like this right. new job I took, it's it's in muggle world, I always say. It's totally a muggle <laughs> world because I feel like I'm meant to to... I, I love to use this word, but I'm not going to, I'll say infuse instead is infuse some of this just by being there. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It, and, you and, know, and knowing, knowing, being so comfortable with who you are is in and of itself extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but, so that's kind of my, you know, that's my bit. So it's like, those are, like I said, they're, I must find the sacred in the mundane person. And I think I was dropped here that way, um, which is why I haven't had, oh my gosh. And I do Kundalini yoga practice, very deep Kundalini yoga practice. And I've had some moments where I can feel that energy rising. But I mean, I didn't have this big earth shattering, like, and maybe some people would disagree if they knew my whole story. But um, I'm not too flappable, which is probably yeah. why I don't consider it any of it earth shattering. But it was all just small steps following the breadcrumbs. Right. That's probably going to be the title That's of the it. book. 
following the breadcrumbs. Following the breadcrumbs <laughs> is great. I like that, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. So, um, thank you so much, Dina, for sharing thank your you. wisdom and insights with us today. Um, it's been a hon honor having you on the show. Uh, links to your website and the Maven's Nest on Substack will be available in our show notes. And um, just before we close, I'd like to share with uh, with the audience our um, fan of the week for today. It is T.P. Cox. And T.P., uh, her review is Terry combines her caring wisdom and insight from her life story to help us heal from our traumas and break through our limiting beliefs to connect with our inner light, who we really are and we're meant to be, an inspiring and soulful listen. Thank you very much, T.P. Cox. Um, I would love to connect with you directly and reach out if you can. Um, and if you want to be a Soul Wisdom Transition Fan of the Week, please go on to uh, Apple Podcasts and leave a review, and maybe you'll be picked. So that concludes our episode for today. Thank you for tuning in to Soul Wisdom Transmission Transitions. And remember, as you navigate through the twists and turns of life's transitions, trust in the wisdom of your soul. Um, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dina. And Thank you for we'll me. see you next time. <laughs>